Hey guys, Brock from Brock's Performance. Um, we're going to replace the chain on this BMW S1000RR, but I wanted you to, uh, to notice something. Um, his sprockets were torn up, so he's got a new sprocket. We're going to put a new chain on. Uh, but we calculate somewhere between 11 and 12 percent difference between crankshaft horsepower and rear wheel horsepower. Um, there's a variety of reasons for that, but most of it is in your drive chain. So this is the, the OEM chain from BMW. It's a great chain. You can put miles and miles and miles on it. But as you can see, it's, it's stiff. And I wish you could feel the tension here. I mean, it's, it, it has got a very stiff, um, a very, very stiff configuration with the O-rings. And that chain's dirty also. And I, I forget, it's got about 6,000 miles on it. Um, but what we're going to do, we're going to replace it with this EK, it's a ZX ring, and I can feel already that even right out of the box with all this thick lube on it, um, this has less resistance. So in theory, that's going to transfer to hopefully a little bit more power getting to the rear wheel. Now, what about nano ring chains? Nano ring chains are great if you're drag racing, if you're racing if you're not going to get caught out in the rain. If you're on the street, man, this is the way to go. You can get caught in the rain, they can get dirty, it doesn't really matter because the O-rings in here help keep the, the water and the gook and the goo from getting underneath the rollers. So you can, you can see right here where, see how that roller's spinning real nice right there? That's fantastic. If I try to do the same thing here with the stock chain, I, that one won't, it's, it, I can't get it to spin. So that's one of the reasons this chain needs to be replaced. It's just, you know, we could maybe clean it up but, and reuse it, but he just bought BSD wheels and a new Vortex sprocket. It's, it just doesn't make any sense not to go ahead and put this on. Now, as part of this, I'm going to show you a little trick that we do that really helps get more horsepower to the rear wheel. But that's going to have to wait. We're on a time crunch with this bike. We're going to put him back together. He rides this thing on the street 99% of the time, so we're going to put this uh, X-ring in here, and just uh, I'll get back with you on the suit on the trick. I think you're going to like it. Let's see how many leaps we have to cut out? Probably one. Well, I don't think we're going to get it back that far. So what we're going to figure out for every inch that you lengthen your bike, you pick up approximately a tenth of a second in ET in the quarter mile. So, for racing, we want this to be back as far as possible. And in a, half, a half inch can make a noticeable difference. But sometimes you're at the mercy of the chain. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pull it all the way back, see if we can get it adjusted. If not, we're going to be forced to take, well, two links out um, just to be able to make the chain fit. Now, if you're crazy, like me, um, we know what gear ratio we want for this bike. So I could actually mix and mingle this size front, this teeth, this diameter front sprocket and increase the diameter here to move that bike back or move this chain all the way back. But that, that's like 600 Super Sport. We are really trying to get everything out of the bike. So uh, anyway, we're going to keep going on this and we'll let you know how it works out. Hey guys, Brock Davidson here. Well, we went to my other shop um, and we're going to put the work, time and effort into reducing the friction of the chain on this 600 because on small bikes like this, every little bit you do helps. Of course, on any bike, if you pay attention to the details, they'll add up and, and equal measurable results. But anyway, um, we want as little bit of rolling resistance or, in, or friction as we can get in uh, the drivetrain. So we know that there's somewhere between a 10 and 13% drop in efficiency or a drop between crankshaft horsepower and rear wheel horsepower, those are some form of drivetrain loss. So what we're going to do, there's really not much we can do as far as transmission, clutch, things of that nature. We do that with our Allison and Petron. So we're going to concentrate on the chain. So if you come over here, um, I've got this chain, and you can see it's already much better than the other chain I showed you on the BMW. Um, why is it better? Well. This was an O-ring chain, and we removed the O-rings. It's very painstaking. So, Brock, why don't you just use a non-O-ring chain? 
great point. And it's a great alternative, especially if you don't want to do the work. Um, but if you come over here and let me show you, you can focus in here. On a non-O-ring chain, when they press them together, you, you get friction between the, between the plates and rollers. If you've got an O-ring chain, you remove the O-ring. Look at that play we've got. Very little friction here. So um, the only real problem we have is all these chains come with really thick oil. So you're probably saying, hey, bro, <laughs> why is your chain in a pan? Looks like you're going to cook it. Well, that's because we are. Uh, what we're going to do, had some leftover uh, Allison Pro Drive 21. We poured it in here and uh, we're going to heat this up and the whole idea is to get it hot enough to where the heavy grease boils up and out away from the chain and gets replaced with this very thin loop. Um, we'll use a hot plate. Uh, I don't know where my hot plate is right now so we may, we may try something else. But um, that's what we want to do is just try and remove as much friction from this as we can. Now one thing you have to be careful of, if you're going to do this you have to keep your chain lubricated. We lube our chains before ever, almost every run at the drag strip. Um, if you're out on the street, you get caught in the rain, you don't lube your chain and you go for a three hour ride, you're probably going to destroy this chain and they get very expensive. Whereas an O-ring chain, you get caught in the rain, the O-ring seal this thick lube in there so the chain still stays lubricated. You may get a little surface rust on the outside, but that's why you don't have to lube over your chains as much. You really just have to keep them clean. This is to extract as much possible power as we can and to get as low an ET as possible. Um, so I'm gonna get to getting rid of this thick grease. I'll try and figure out how we're gonna do that. And I'll show you that here in just a minute. Brock, what you cooking? Oh, all right. Well, I'm cooking me up some stupid fast. Check this out. Now you can already see, I don't know if you can see the white here, but that's the lithium grease boiling away and being replaced with the lightweight, less than zero weight um, Allison full synthetic oil. So we're just gonna let that, this sit here and steep a bit. I wish I had my hot plate, I can't find it. So we're here on the grill, oil, flames, bad. So we're gonna be real careful. We got a fire extinguisher here waiting in case something bad would happen, which <laughs> it could always be the case. So anyway, we're just gonna let this sit there and do this. I'm gonna move it out of the way with a wooden soup spoon, the heavier stuff, and then uh, turn off the flames pull this stuff up out of here and we're going to have a really nice chain that does a great job of reducing friction to the rear wheel and making the bike go faster as a result. So um, <laughs> if there's anything to show you, hopefully none of it's catastrophic. We'll be back in a minute. So we'll just pull off some of this. It's all just floating there. But the chain itself if you can see down in there, almost all the white grease is gone, and boy, it is easy to move. Look at that. We're getting there. A little bit more. It's going to be a good batch. You can see all the white. It's here. The chain. I'll pull it up here. Pretty much. Let me try and find an end here. There you go. And then we'll pull it off this grill, being real careful not to spill any oil. And then we'll pull it out of the oil, wipe it down, and show you what we got. what we got but if you want if you want to come up close here I don't know if you can see but all of that real thick white lithium is gone and you can see from the color of the oil that was clear 
now it's all white that's from the uh, that's from the grease boiling off and staying in the oil and then we'll just discard that oil when we're finished so I know some of you are going Brock so much work why would you put so much effort into something like this what's well, simple do this with your bike put it up on the rear stand grab it and spin it <clears throat> the chain mod is free horsepower everybody likes free now um, granted we also put in we installed worldwide bearings ceramic bearings in that wheel before we put it on also we already had it off why not um, and <laughs> inevitably get well how much horsepower is it worth man it just doesn't matter if our bike has this amount of friction reduction with the ceramic bearings and the bike next to us doesn't we have a competitive advantage now as far as numbers go everybody loves numbers right um, the ceramic bearings there is no magic number as to what they are worth I can tell you this we've never slowed down a motorcycle by putting them in it just doesn't work that way they really work that's why we sell them we've used them for years all the fast users or all the fast guys use them too as far as the chain um, on average, we'll see one and a half to two and a half horsepower by doing that mod on a modern chain. Um, but that's going to vary also. What's the condition of your chain? What type is it? Um, <laughs> without anybody thinking I'm Pinocchio here, I'm going to go ahead and give you a number. Our biggest gain with the chain mod is, drum roll, seven horsepower. No kidding. It was on a Gen 1 Hayabusa with a build engine. The bike stayed on the dyno. We never even unbolted it, unstrapped it from the dyno. We just turned the wheel, pulled the O-rings out, ran it again. It took us a couple hours to take the O-rings out. It is a, it, it's a tedious job. Um, but it picked up seven horsepower. Now, it had an old crappy chain. We knew something was wrong. Does that mean you're going to pick up seven? No. Just trust me on this. Do the work, put the effort in, pay attention to the smallest details. This little Ninja 600, when we're finished with all the details, this bike will run nine second quarter miles. So what's that mean? That means roll up on a 600, now that's with a good rider, um, and line up against a guy with a stock Busa, you're kicking his butt on your 600. And you're not going to do that by out horsepowering him. You got to outthink him. Do things like this. So, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, <laughs> it took us a while. We got a lot going on, but we finally got it done. Until next time, I'm Brock from Brock's Performance. We'll see you then.